Hi, and welcome to this course on fluid simulations in Blender. We'll see how to simulate fire and smoke. The course is aimed at those who already have a basic knowledge of Blender and its interface. At first, creating good-looking simulations can be frustrating, as you need to precisely calibrate every single parameter. However, in this course, we will try to simplify all these aspects in order to get the best results. As you can see in the video, we'll create a scene with an asteroid falling to the ground, creating a big explosion. So, let's start with some basic concepts related to fluid simulations. The fastest way to create a fire simulation is to add a fluid emitter, for example a simple sphere. Then in the quick effects of the object menu, select quick smoke. As you can see, Blender automatically creates some smoke around the sphere. In addition, we also have a cube around the sphere. This object is called Domain. If you also want to add some fire, you need to open the Quick Smoke menu at the bottom left of the viewport and select the Smoke and Fire option. In this way, some fire is automatically added around the sphere. In order to be able to view the simulation, you have to save the Blender file. Now, you have to go back to frame 1 and start the timeline by pressing the play button. As you can see, fire and smoke are generated from the sphere. However, when the smoke reaches the edges of the cube, it automatically stops. This domain, indeed, is the space where the simulation takes place. This, of course, is only a basic simulation. In order to get better results, we have to take a look at the simulation parameters. First of all, let's consider the source of the fire, in our case the sphere. Select this object and go to the Physics tab. Here, the Fluid button is already selected. Below, we have all the parameters related to the emitter of the fire. In the Type menu, the Option Flow is already selected, and this because the sphere is the emitter of the smoke. On the other hand, if we select the cube, the Type menu is Domain. Well. Now let's try to create the same simulation, this time starting from scratch. Open a new Blender file and add a new object, this time a cylinder, that will be our fire emitter. Now, add a cube. This object will be our simulation domain. We have to position and scale the cube in order to fill the space where the simulation should take place. However, be careful not to make the cube too big. Otherwise, the simulation will be calculated even where it shouldn't. And this means more computation time. Now, open the Physics tab and select the Fluid button. In the Type menu, select Domain. Finally, as Domain Type, select Gas. The other type of domain is for liquid simulations. Now, select the cylinder and assign a fluid physics property. Then, select flow as type and fire and smoke as flow type. Save the file and starting the simulation, you should see the fire and smoke as before. But in some cases, nothing happens. This because sometimes, the simulation needs to be reset manually. The best way to do that is to change the value in the resolution division's property of the domain. This is a simple way that we'll use often to force Blender to reset the simulation. In the domain object, we have the most important options that control the fluid emission. Most of them are the same also for liquid simulations. The first property is the resolution we just saw. It defines the number of voxels contained in the domain. Consider a voxel as a 3D pixel. You can see the size of the voxel in one corner of the cube. So, the higher the number of voxels, the higher the final resolution. And, as you can imagine, the calculation time. A resolution division of 32 is fine for a fast preview. 
However, for the final rendering, consider a value between 128 and 256. The next parameter is the time scale. It represents the global speed of the simulation. For example, it can be useful for slow motion simulations. If you set the value to 0.5, the simulation will be much slower. Remember, as told before, that in order to see the updates, you have to change the number in the resolution division's property. This will be true for all the times we'll change a parameter. So, I won't repeat this each time. Let's reset the speed to 1. The CLF number parameter is a bit tricky to explain. Basically, it represents the maximum speed that can be reached before increasing the number of the simulation steps. Let's explain this in a simpler way. When the smoke moves, Blender has to calculate the direction of the volume contained in each voxel. For example, consider this case of a raising smoke. Each cell has a direction and velocity, based on the dynamics of this specific simulation. Also, suppose that, in a single frame, the fluid contained in this specific cell moves from point 1 to point 2. If Blender performs only one calculation per frame, the final position can be this. But, if we allow Blender to calculate more times for a single frame, the final position could be different, because in the space of a frame, there may have been forces that have caused the smoke to change direction. This is even more true when the smoke moves fast. In this case, the cell covers a greater distance in a single frame, and if we allow only a single or few computations per frame, we can lose all the variations of forces, or collisions, that occur in that space of time. Now, the meaning of the CLF number should be clearer. For example, the default value of 4 means that until the cells reach this speed, the time steps are kept at the default value. If the velocity is greater than this value, for example in the case of a fast-moving fluid, the time steps are increased to more precisely calculate the velocity of the fluid. And the maximum and minimum number of time steps are defined in the properties below, the time steps maximum and minimum. The default values mean that, in case of additional time steps per frame, only a maximum number of 4 can be set. Generally, there is no need to change the value of CLF number. On the other hand, it can be useful to increase the number of maximum and minimum to get the best results. We will see this later when we'll set up the asteroid simulation. The use adaptive time steps ensures that Blender automatically sets the right time steps in each condition. That empty space property may not be considered at the moment. The next parameter, delete an obstacle option, deletes the fluid inside an obstacle. This can be useful to avoid fluid computations where not necessary.